Um, okay. uh, so thank you for joining us. Uh, this is part of the conversation series of the American Society of Comparative Law, and we're very excited today to have with us Professor Ugo Matei, who's the Alfred and Fromm Professor of International Comparative Law at the University of California, Hastings, as well as Professor of Civil Law at the University of Turin, among many other both activist and social accolades. I know the International University College, the fight for water. I mean, it just goes on and on. We're very happy to have you here. And specifically, uh, Professor Matei has written with Fritjof Capra a new book called The Ecology of Law Toward a Legal System uh, uh, in Tune with Nature. Right, and community. I actually have a copy as well, which I've been reading, Ugo, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's uh, published with Barrett Carr Publishers, and it's just come out, I believe. Yeah, it will come out tomorrow, actually. These are pre-copies. Wow. Yeah, so we are, we, are, we, are, we are good. So I just thought, like, to jump right into it, uh, so it seems the book is speaking in a, t a time of what it sees as crisis, and that crises are rooted in some sort of obsolete worldview that we keep holding on to. And you mentioned two traditions, the legal tradition and the science tradition. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, my co-author, Fritjof Capra, is a scientist, is a physicist, is an ecologist, very well known for uh, a book in the mid-70s called The Tao of Physics. And he's been one of those authors that for a long time now have been thinking about paradigmatic changes that uh, affect our era. And uh, the conversation with him was, has been for now the last five years about how these paradigmatic changes have not affected the law at all. The, the law has been proceeding into an obsolete mechanistic conception. And this, mechani this fundamental mechanistic conception is itself the product of a world vision, which is modernity, which in turn has triggered the accumulative and extractive mentality of the Industrial Revolution and later of our own model of development. Uh, this model of development we are living today is uh, bankrupt. Uh, we have an ecological uh, footprint of 1.4 which means that someday, at mid-August, we are starting living off resources of the Earth that will not be reproduced anymore. And the reason why our, uh, our uh, ecological footprint is just 1.4, which is already pretty bad, uh, has a lot to do with comparative law. The fact is that in many countries of the world, the ecological footprint today is 0.10%. The Americans uh, have an ecological footprint now almost six, means that we would need six planets if everybody in the world was living like we live in the West. The Europeans uh, should not be too happy because they are five themselves, so we need just five planets to keep living this way. And so the whole promise of uh, continuous growth in the long term is just uh, a, a cynical lie. It is just impossible for everybody in the world to live at the standards we live in the West. And so uh, this is the, the fundamental question, how can we change that, how we got there and how can we change this. And the way we got there was through a very clear project, that is the project known as Modernity, to transform some of the common pool resources, some of the commons we have out there into capital, because capital was needed in order to make some sort of basic innovations that we needed as, you know, as, a, as a species. So we needed good medicine, good hospitals, we needed shelter, we needed clothing, we needed uh, you know, pure water and all these kind of things, industrial production, and all of that for, was good for a while. And the, the legal system really sort of worked very successfully in that direction in connection with the scientists. So the mechanistic vision, uh, the, the, the positivist uh, notion of the car, the distinction between the subject and the object, the existence of a reality out there that can be described, the vision of the world as an aggregate of party souls that make it, uh, have been translated in the law into property rights. Property rights, contract freedom, uh, state sovereignty, uh, limited liability for corporations, uh, fault principle in torts, all of these were legal creations in order to accumulate capital. So what changed with science 
where it started breaking from this mechanistic vision? Well, the break started very early with evolution. Evolutionary theory already broke with the vision of reality of, 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 the, of the world as a watch, you know, as a clock, the old mechanistic metaphor of the car. Uh, but, that, but more recently with relativism and quantum theory, the old positivistic vision is simply gone, is simply challenged. It's not that we don't, that the Newtonian mechanism doesn't work anymore to build a bridge, but the vision and the understanding of a reality is way more complex today. And, and that is not the case in law, it's not the case in social sciences, it's not the case in economics. In our construction of our methodology of work, we simply have lost track with the fundamental transformation in our understanding of reality of, reality of nature. We have no ecological approach whatsoever, whereas the scientific model is turning from mechanicism to an holistic uh, ecological vision. The book calls for, the College of Law calls for exactly that kind of transformation, which requires uh, basically taking the law in uh, and, and, and taking on the function and the purpose by which as a human community we do our laws and today we have 10 times as much capital as we need and we have no commons anymore. So now we have to use the law as we did successfully in the past to transform uh, commons into capital, now we need the law to transform some of this overabundant capital we have into revamped commons. And this is a big, law? this is equal law. Mm -hmm. This is considering law in connection with politics, with tradition, with uh, religion, with uh, um, society, with differences, and with fundamental needs of the whole world. Uh, comparative law cannot be about preaching how better to reproduce the Western context abroad because the Western context has to understand that it's broke from the, our possibilities to regenerate resources in the long run. So now the comparative project should become, just to go to, we are here at the Society of Comparative Law, should, be, should become at least once again look at the best human practices in the past as much as in the present, mm -hmm. that even if they are not formally considered law in our own sense, has to be considered binding legal practices that work in a way that is sustainable in the long run. So this catalog of good legal practices requires the work of comparativists. We have to go out there in the global south, there are lots of communities that have been resilient for many, many years, that have a much better ecological footprint than ours, and try to update those kind of ideas to make them functional in a global sense. This is not only happening in the global south, there are a lot of communities that start to deal with law in a way to organize themselves. Also in the, in the global north, also in the west, there are people that just have decided that this model of developing is not going to work and they have to build up some differences. Okay? And so take away the property individualism and the individual property from the center, substitute it with commons, with community, with relationship, take away the vision of politics just as a professionalized, vertical, hierarchical relationship between the, govern, the governor and the governed, you know, take away all of that in favor of a rethinking of the fundamentals of the very core of the law. Wow. The book is The Ecology of Law, with Capra, and we're here with Ugo Matei, the co-author. Ugo, thank you so much. Do you have any last word for the uh, audience? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the last word is, uh, you know, this book has to be read as uh, a sort of uh, wake-up call for our community mm -hmm. and uh, as a first uh, stone in, the, in, in a very, very calm, uh, fictionally calm space. Pond. So now let's kind of understand that we are in trouble as civilization and let's try to move steps in the right direction all together. This is just the beginning of a conversation that I hope goes on involving many, particularly many young scholars. Professor Ugo Matei, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you so much.